Hello scientists! Uh, today we're going to do the first part in this video of Lab 5.04. We're going to talk about gravity force. Later you can watch the video on the Pendulum Lab. That is the second half of Lab 5.04. The first part of the lab is doing the pre-lab and watching a TED Talk video or a TED video on how to think about gravity. Um, which is really important because you're going to get the formula for the force of gravity. I've stopped the video at 41 seconds where it discusses the formula that you're going to need to use in this lab. This is the force for gravity. This is the gravitational constant, which is um, always constant for a particular planet. This is the mass of two objects, so mass of the first one, mass of the second, and this r that's squared in the formula, this r is the distance between the two objects. Just like these two objects are um, have a gravitational force on each other, the distance between them would be r, and then you square it in the formula. So after you find the formula for the force of gravity, you're going to go down into part one and use a simulation that looks like this. And I'm going to show you just a bit about the simulation so you can ha um, have the tools you need to finish the lab. So when you start the lab, it's going to look something like this. This is the mass of one object. And hey, you can find that mass down here. Remember, we need the mass of two objects in our formula. So here's the first mass, and here's the second mass. We also needed a distance between them, and conveniently there's a ruler here that will show you the distance between these two objects in meters. We can control the masses of both objects by using the slider, or you can click back and forth if you want to adjust it to a particular number. So both of these masses can be controlled with the sliders. Um, and then the force, that big F in the formula, is right here. So there's a couple of different things you need to know. You need to know the distance, that, that R in the formula, and you need to know the two masses, and you need to know the total force. So we talked a little bit about what you can change in the simulation, the masses. You can change the distance. You can move these guys. Um, and that will change the force that's at the top of the, the force between the two masses, the force of gravity, since everything exerts a force of gravity on everything else, even these two little earrings are um, exerting gravity on each other and on me, just not very much because they're not very massive. Um, we, we can look at the formula for the force of gravity that we found in question two that was in the TED video. And we have to think about what three things can we change in the formula that you can also change in the simulation. Well, we talked about the masses. We talked about the distance here. You can change that. And we also talked about um, the fact that if you change the mass and the distance, you're going to change this big F on the left-hand side of the equation. So for number five, you need to go into the simulation, change each variable, and record what happens to the gravitational force. That's the force at the top. Use scientific language. For example, if I keep the distance between the two objects constant and I increase the mass of the blue object, then the gravitational force increases. So you want to look at, go into the simulation and look at the relationships between the mass and the distance and the force. And then you want to write down what you find out. So basically this is an opportunity for you to just go into the simulation and play a little bit and write down what you learned. So for the second part of the gravity lab, you're really going to have to be familiar with this formula. Remember this formula because we're going to be using it uh, a great deal for the next couple questions. For number five, let's do a little experiment. So I have both masses set to the same thing. 
and I'm going to turn one all the way up to a thousand and you can see that the math the force changed here I'll turn it back down so you can watch it change this is like four uh, I think it's pico newtons and then it gets much bigger like 4,000 pico newtons What's going to happen if I do the same thing, if I turn this back down and turn the blue one up? Does it, do we get to the same force? If I make a change uh, in the blue, ma blue ball's mass that's the same as the change in the red object's mass, what happens to this force here? You can think about that for question five. And think about how you enter these masses into the formula. Where do they go? It's going to be this mass times this mass. Is that going to be the same result if you do this, if you switch the masses here? So for question seven, you're going to go into the simulation and double the mass of the blue object and keeping the red object the same. So let's say you want to go 50 kilograms for red and 100 kilograms for blue. Keep the distance the same and see what happens to the force at the top. You can do the same thing. Uh, you keep the distance and the blue mass the same. You triple, triple the red object's mass this time. I think you have the tools to do that. Um, and you just use that formula or even just you can look at it at the top. Based on your answers to questions seven and eight, what's the mathematical relationship to mass and force? And that's for you to discover what happens when you increase the mass, put it in the formula, what's going to happen to that force? Is it a direct relationship? Is it an indirect relationship? If you increase the mass, does that increase the force? So in question 10, we're going to make both the blue and red masses the same, record the gravitational force right here when they're three meters apart, and then we're going to move them at twice the distance, go from three meters to six meters in the simulation, record that force, and then look at the relationship here. So for number 10, I want to set both the masses the same because we're looking for the we're looking at the distance as the variable. Let's just go about 500 on both of them. I'll just can use the clicker here to go to exactly 500 on both of them. And then we want them 3 meters apart. So right now, let's look at the this is 1 2 three, four meters, so I need to scoot this one over a little bit. Okay, now they're three meters apart. And look at the force right here. Write that down in box A and number 10, box A number 10. Now I'm, we're going to pull them six meters apart. So I'll go one, two, three more meters. And now look at the force. Put that in box B and then use your calculator to divide them. I'm sure you have a calculator on your computer or your cell phone or somewhere in your house. So we recorded the force at three meters. Remember the masses were the same. We recorded the, the force at six meters and now it's your job to do that division. Box B right here, this number, divided by box A. And then in 11, you're gonna think about the mathematical relationship between force and distance. If you take the distance and you double it, what happens? Remember, hint, hint, that the distance in the formula is represented by r squared. So if you double the distance, what's going to happen when you square that? Is that going to massively increase the difference? Uh, if you take the, the distance in the formula as r squared, and uh, as r, and square it. So now it's time to just go in the simulation and kind of mess around. What is the largest gravitational force you can produce between the two masses? You can turn the mass way up and pull them far apart or push them close together. Keep an eye on the piconewtons. 
And when you're done, if you think you've gotten the most, the largest force of gravity that you can, write down your different variables, your masses and the distance. And then you're going to go back and mess around with the simulation a little bit more to find the smallest gravitational force. And then write down your variables, of course, for mass and distance. Okay, number 14, a little bit of writing wrap up. Use what you've learned in the simulation and using that formula for the force of gravity to make some inferences about the, how the Earth, the Sun, and the Moon exert gravitational forces on each other. And if you um, don't want to make, if you're having a hard time making inferences, you can go look things up online. Just make sure you cite your sources and don't copy and paste because I will know. So for the second part of this lab, that's in a different video, and you can watch that video for some help on how to uh, investigate how the mass and string length affect the period of the pendulum. You'll also be using what you know about gravity when you get to the end of the lab, and you are looking at pendulums and different planets because that gravitational force is going to be different. Um, for different planets. And so in the simulation, the so when you're working in the simulation on the gravity gone wild part of the lab, make sure that you're resetting your gravity to the moon or Jupiter or planet X or no gravity. What happens in no gravity? No gravity can be kind of interesting. Here is our pendulum. We'll hit play. If there's no gravity, what happens? As opposed to the pendulum's behavior on Earth. Uh, there's more information in the second video on how to use the simulation. So I'll let you watch the second video. Good luck. Thanks for doing this lab. You're a great scientist. I'm always impressed. Uh, increasingly impressed by your answers. Thanks for your hard work. This is Miss R signing off, 504 Part 1.